Hey guys, it's Heidi with AMB Home Church, and welcome back. We are in Seeing the Unseen by Randy Alcorn. Today is day 43. I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday. Um, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The video that we had on there um, by Randy Alcorn, I mean, just really, really, really good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you go back and catch up. If you've missed any videos come out Monday through Friday, this is a 90 day study. So we're about halfway through. These are all on a playlist though. So if ever you've missed a day, need to catch up, you can go and do that, see them all there. But let's go ahead and dive into today's A Passion to Know the King of Kings. Don't let life just happen to you. Choose to invest your days in what matters. I think so much of so many of these topics I know that we talk about on here and that I've shared on our homeschool channel and things like that, it really comes down to just being intentional. And I don't think that's something that our society is really good <laughs> at doing kind of as just a whole. So um, I think it, you know, a lot of these things, what are we investing our time in? We're all investing our time into something each day. So what is it in? Is it in things that matter, things that you know do have eternal purpose, or things that are passing away, um, things that that aren't you know really worth much of anything? Just like if we were to look at our diets and say, okay, am I eating? fresh, good, wholesome foods, or am I eating junk foods? And it's okay to have a little bit of junk foods, but I need to be intentional and focused to make sure that the food that I am consuming is good, healthy food that is going to nourish my body and keep me healthy and strong and, and all of those good things. Um, I think a lot of our time really should be looked at the same. Are you investing your time in things that are good and wholesome and, and uplifting and edifying, or are you wasting your time and investing your time in junk, right? So back to what Mr. Alcorn has to say. We tend to be passionate about things that don't matter. Let's say that again. We tend to be passionate about things that don't matter. Fanatics and fans about what won't last. Guys, we are all guilty of this because right now we could all start talking about things that we just love. And there is a good and healthy way to do that. And there's also a very not healthy way, which is called idol worship, that that can also turn into. But we are afraid to look like fanatics for Jesus. We seem determined to dole Jesus out in acceptable portions, unwilling to appear fools for Christ. What a loss. Consider the example of John Wesley, who was asked about the key to his ministry. He supposedly said, I asked God to set me on fire and let people watch me burn. Isn't that an interesting thought, though? Because look at something that you're passionate about, be it sports or some type of activity. Um, like me, I mean, if you guys have hung out and we've hung out and talked for very long, I'm probably going to talk about gardening. I'm probably going to talk about baking. I'm going to talk about, I mean, there's so many things that, um, yes, I have a great interest in. And, and that's great. It's not that they're bad and evil and sinful to have things that you enjoy. But could I stand in front of a stranger at the store and talk as fanatically and passionately about gardening as I could Christ, right? I think that's where we need to stop and really hold that mirror up to ourselves today and say, hey, when certain family members are around, is there, I talk a little less about Jesus and a little more about, you know, sports teams or, or whatever, because that's something that I know they're more comfortable with, you know, like I think stopping and looking at that. And I love that quote there, that John Wesley quote, I ask God to set me on fire and let people watch me burn. Are people watching you burn? Because you are set so on fire by the Lord and God's word and his ways that everyone around you can't help but watch you burn and maybe get a little warmth from that fire because that's where your all in all passion is at. I thank God that today I don't just love Jesus as much as I used to. I love him more. That is to his credit and I'm deeply grateful. 
He's what makes it so exciting and so worthwhile, and he's the one who empowers me to walk what's been called a long obedience in the same direction. More than ever, I want to know Christ. How about you? Give Jesus first place in your life. Don't just let your life happen to you. Choose what to do with it, or in the end, you'll wonder where it went. If you're going to persevere as Christ's follower, you must consciously choose not to squander your life or let it idle away, but to invest it in what matters. Are you focused? Are you being intentional? And that means intentionally putting Christ first through studying his word so that you can know him, through spending time in prayer, through focusing yourself and your attention on these things that truly do matter and do have an eternal impact and not just letting time, because time's slipping through all of our fingers and nobody can hold on to it more than the other. But I've been given the same amount of time as you've been given, as Randy Alcorn's been given, as everybody has been given. Today, 60 seconds to me looks like 60 seconds to you looks like 60 seconds to him. Like it's the same amount. So what are you doing with it? And I think especially, you know, we're looking at, you know, everybody's kind of home. Things are looking a little different. Well, how are you spending your time? Do you spend time in God's word every day or are you scrolling on your phone? Are you watching TV? Are you focusing on things that don't matter? How are you spending your time? Are you intentional? Do you truly stop and ponder, hmm, am I carefully choosing my steps in all that I do so that I'm not just wasting my time away on nothingness? That's the part that's so hard. So many people, you know, you guys are so frustrated and you go, so this, okay, okay, well, how much time have you spent in your Bible today? Man, I shouldn't have any time today. Okay, well, I've seen that you've been on Facebook and Instagram for the past, however. Like, how many YouTube videos did you watch? You know, how much time have you spent on Netflix or whatever it is? You don't have time to read God's Word? Guys, we can't let that be acceptable to us. We can't know His ways and walk in His ways if we don't know what His Word says. We have to stay focused. We have to stay intentional. Because we should all have a burning passion to know the King of Kings. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Do you count sharing in his suffering, which we talked about yesterday? Do you count that as fellowship with the Lord to share in his sufferings? I think that's definitely a, a change of, uh, of outlook that we could have on these different things, right? Um, our next scripture, let me type in the web address. Our next scripture is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. It says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time. Guys, it might even be worthwhile, maybe for the rest of today, maybe for the next, you know, 24, 48 hours, whatever. Keep a log in every. 15 minutes, every half hour, every hour, write down what you just spent your time doing. Take an inventory of your time and how you spend it and look at yourself and see where you're spending your time. Is that where you should spend your time? Are you being intentional, right? Max Lucado said, the Fort Knox of faith is Christ, fellowshipping with him, walking with him, pondering him, exploring him, the heart-stopping realization that in him you are part of something ancient, endless, unstoppable, and unfathomable. John Flavel said, the longer you know Christ and the nearer you come to him, still the more do you see of his glory. Even farther prospect of Christ ever entertains the mind with a fresh delight. He is, he is, as it were, a new Christ every day, and yet the same Christ still. So we are going to pull up epm.org. Um, it is epm.org forward slash motivated. And I believe this is the transcript. So there is, it's titled, How Can I Stay Motivated in My Relationship with Christ? Let me set that down. Um, it's from 2012. 
A reader of his blog asked, how does a believer keep his motivation? I understand the the motivation of the new believer, but how does one stay motivated in day-to-day living year after year? And there is a little seven-minute video on here that, pause now, let's go watch that. Um, And I believe what, or you might not need to pause necessarily. I believe what we're getting ready to read is the transcript of that. So maybe we can read through it and then when we're done, go over and watch it at epm.org forward slash motivated. But I'll go ahead and read through what is written up here. It says, another way of putting that question in biblical terms is how do you keep from losing your first love, right? Revelation 2, 4, we see that. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. We see that in the letters Christ is sending out to the churches, right? When you come to know Christ and put your faith in him, Jesus changes your life. You're excited about him and everything in life is a contrast to what it was before. But over the long haul, how do you keep that motivation going? How do you sustain a Christ-centered life? I think the answer to that is really how you sustain a relationship with any person. When Nancy and I, his wife, first met and started dating, there was an excitement to our relationship and we had our first love. But you begin to realize that over time, certain things will change and the tendency is to start taking each other for granted. Any of us who have been in long-term marriages and relationships, you understand that, right? It just, it happens. It's just a natural part of the process, I think. So what do you do about that? You make sure to cultivate your relationship. See how normal this is? We would normally do this with any other relationship in our lives, right? Some of you have adult children, and so you've had to make changes of how you continue to cultivate that relationship or attempt to cultivate relationships as things change. Marriages, um, even with other family and friends, we, we take intentional steps toward deepening and continuing to grow this relationship even, you know, far beyond that beginning initial stage. Even when our girls were small, Nancy and I would have a date night and go out together. The two of us would sometimes go on vacations alone. We called on a lot of babysitters who were people from the church, or our kids would stay at our friends' homes or with grandparents. We really believed that the best thing we could do for our children was to have a strong marriage and to enjoy our time together. I completely agree. So how do you spend time with God? Okay? Pretty simple. We're going to lay it out right here so none of us have any excuses to not be intentionally cultivating our relationship with the Lord every single day until we get to be with Him. By opening up His Word and spending regular time there. Like, step number one, if we are not starting here, you guys, then no wonder things are falling apart. We have to start in His Word. I know that believers used to talk a lot more about daily devotions and time with God, but I think many people started feeling like, that's just a check-off-the-box, superficial kind of Christianity. I don't want to just think, okay, I had my quiet time, so now I'm okay, and that's all it takes. Well, of course, that's not all it takes, but I would argue that it is a significant part of sustaining our relationship with the Lord, because I need to spend time in God's Word every day. During the days when I don't, I really see a difference in my eternal perspective, my lack of eternal perspective, right? We have to start there. We cannot take that step one for granted. It must be our priority. So I would encourage you to spend time daily in God's Word. It can be a read-through-the-Bible-in-a-year type of program or one of many programs that provide daily readings of both Old and New Testament passages. I agree. I think it is very important that we are complementing Old Testament with New Testament. You guys, if you saw our 21-day Bible challenge that Lex did with the church group, she started that, hey, old and new, flip, you know, flip-flop back and forth and be reading every day an hour, an hour and a half. It's like watching two shows on TV, which we have no problem doing. What? Let's do that with God's Word. I shared with you guys, I love putting my earbud in and listening to it while I'm cleaning or doing different work and just letting it play. Another thing, especially with kids, trying to get kids in on it, 
I do with our homeschool plans. We read one chapter out of Old Testament, one chapter out of New Testament, and a psalm or a chapter out of Proverbs so that we were getting some of everything. But even just turning on the audio reading of scripture and letting that play through the house so everybody is getting some scripture. I mean, no, it doesn't replace deep study time. Of course not. But it's so important to just constantly be filling our minds with God's word. And that really makes a huge impact with our perspective throughout the day and especially our eternal perspective. There are also Bible read-through groups with a weekly study where the Bible itself is a textbook. The participants have all read through the same portions of scripture and anybody can share anything they want from those passages. This helps some with the accountability because you're asking each other, how did you do in your daily readings? If your struggle is that you need accountability to do this, message us, aphomechurch at gmail.com, message us on the group board. We've got folks that we can pair everyone up to make sure everybody's got someone to be accountable to. If that's what you need, just reach out and say so. Anytime that you are looking to go join any type of study group or something or the other, the Bible should be the main text. If the book you're using is not the Bible and that's not the main focus, that's where I would definitely question that and want to check out a little bit more before you dive into something like that. But yes, get together, study, discuss, talk, right? That's what we're, we're doing. That's so important. Time and prayer, right? Second point. So first, being God's word every day. Two, time and prayer should be integrated into your time in the word. I confess that when I set aside time and prayer and it is all without reference to God's word, I can get sort of lost. So what I will do is pray scripture, sometimes out loud to myself as I read. I'd recommend reading in Colossians 1, where Paul prays for the Colossians and then repeats the things he prays for. The knowledge of God's will, a greater Christ-likeness, conformity to his image, and a greater thankfulness of heart. I pray those things for myself, for my children, and my grandchildren, and Nancy, his wife. Praying is talking with God. Even in times when I've been dealing with serious depression, one of the things that has kept my spiritual life fresh and my relationship with the Lord intimate, not that it's never been stale because there have been times of staleness, is that I've kept going back to the Lord and just talking to him as my savior, my Lord, my God, my judge, and also my friend. In my novel, Safely Home, which we have, and I cannot wait, it's one that I have um, hopefully for my teen and I to both read through. I'm super excited. I talk about a chair that Lee Kwan and his family have in their home that nobody has ever sat in. Their guest, Ben Fielding, can never understand why, because it's the best chair in the house. It is only late in the book that someone finally explains to Ben what this chair is and why it sits sits empty when they eat dinner or why someone might sit on the floor when the chair goes unused. It's because the chair, which was made by Lee Kwan's grandfather, a master craftsman, represents the presence of Jesus Christ. What? Spoiler alert a little bit for those of us who are getting ready to read the book, but now I'm super intrigued. I've prayed... Or there have been times when I've prayed, Lord, I just want to sense your presence. I have gotten down on my knees with a chair in front of me and said, Lord, you are just as present as if you were physically sitting in this chair. You used to sit in chairs. As a carpenter, you used to make chairs. I'm not creating an idol or saying he really is physically sitting on the chair. He's not. But I'm saying he's there and every bit is real as if he were sitting in the chair. Isn't that an interesting idea? Imagine if you had a chair in your home that was to be a representation to you and your whole family of Christ sitting physically in that chair. Imagine the way we might change the things we watch on TV, the words we use, the attitudes we show. Interesting thought. I say, help me sense your presence as I pray to you right now. I visualize Christ sitting in that chair and look to him and talk to him. And again, that's not idolatry because Jesus did really become a man. He's the God man. We don't know exactly what his body looked like, but he had a body and now has a resurrected body, which he'll have forever. Another thing I would say is believe with all your heart that God has orchestrated your day and has divine appointments for you that you don't yet know about. 
For example, on a given day, I might be going to play tennis with a teenager, but I guarantee you I'll meet or see someone else as well. We may go out to dinner because he has questions about the Bible, and I'll connect with someone else, perhaps our waiter or waitress, and give them a gospel booklet. God has your day planned out, and that's what makes the Christian life exciting, trusting that God knows what is going to happen today and is going to give you opportunities to represent Him. I love doing that, spending time in prayer and telling Lord, Lord, you show me what my priorities are today. What am I to be focused on today? Because am I trying to focus on things that are my focus and, and what I want and, and me-centered? Or am I doing the things that you really want to see from me in my day? And then trust God to lead that. All of these things help us stay passionate about the Lord so that we don't live a Christian life of drudgery where we wearily put one foot in front of another thinking, I'm going to try my best to be obedient. Instead, a better cry is Paul's from Philippians chapter 3. He says, I want to know Christ. He'd known him for 30 years, but he wanted to know him better every single day. Our relationship with Christ needs to be a love relationship, and although we certainly want to be obedient and need to obey Him even when we don't feel like it, we're nonetheless daily asking God to be present in our lives. We can trust He'll answer that prayer because He has promised us. In Matthew 28:20, 20, He says, Lo, I am with you always, even at the end of the age. That's us, guys. As we pursue knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, may we sense the very present presence of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? That's pretty awesome. Well, hopefully that gives us all a little something to think about and focus on through our day today as we go through whatever it is that the Lord might have before us. Spend time in His Word. Spend time in prayer. Really be intentional about what you're doing and the relationship with Christ that you are focusing on and you are pursuing day in and day out. Because every day, even Lord willing, a hundred years from now, we need to all be still focusing on these things, right? Amen. All right, guys, enjoy your day. I pray that this blesses you. Um, and yeah, go, go and pull up the video because I think it's just his version of talking about it. That's what I'm getting ready to go do is pull up mine um, where he's kind of talking about um, the things that we just read. And otherwise, we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.